moving on to strikers then. We touched on them briefly. Um, we've gone from start of the season, wondering if we're ever going to get a, a decent striker. Um, obviously, we had Daydu uh, last season. Uh, goal numbers were, were decent, but I think you know, most people in the stadium uh, have a bit of an issue with the number of chances that he gets that he doesn't convert. Um, and then obviously we signed a phobie, uh, last minute deal, uh, mm. alone, which was great, uh, up until his injury, which was really unfortunate. You know, he's got a bit of a history of it. So, you know, we took the risk, uh, and it didn't really pay off from that perspective. I think he's near, actually nearing fitness again now. Uh, and then, you know, uh, luckily again in January and the board stepped up fair play, you know, we were all sort of kicking off saying we're not going to get another striker. And then we signed Naki Wells, which I think, uh, if you'd have offered us that, at the beginning of the January transfer window, would have bit your arm off, to be honest. So, uh, I think we're in a position now where if a phobie comes back and he stays, which I think, you know, there's quite a lot of rumours around the fact that 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 needs to happen or that both parties want that to happen, then all of a sudden we got three really good options, actually. Um, And, again, whether you're playing playing one up front, you're going to have two real disappointed guys on the bench that aren't going to hang around for long. Uh, if you're playing two, you probably need Daydu as one of those guys. Could you play a Phobie and Wells? Are they too similar? I don't know. Um, you get some gold. Jesus. <laughs> but potentially too similar, I think. Um, it'll be interesting to see. I think Naki Wells is going to be a great signing. Again, it's just a shame that it's been stunted with this whole situation. I think he would have been um, you know, up to six, seven goals. He, mm-hmm. his, his goal scoring record everywhere has been incredible. So uh, I was really excited to see him sign, actually. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's just been important. I gave Dave a lot of stuff, Dave Jeju a lot of stick on the vlog before. Uh, my biggest issue was the amount of chances missed. Um, I think he's he's a decent player. Um, hang on, my phone just nearly died. Are you still there? Yeah, sorry, yeah. technical issues. Yeah. Take two. Uh, yeah, I think he's a good player to bring on. He's fantastic in the air, especially defensively. Uh, does miss chances though. And yeah, our now best he's defensive header. Our best defensive oh, header from the corner. Arguably the best oh. defensive header we've play, ever had. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think it's, uh, it's important that he's had some competition now because our biggest issue was he would always start and we wouldn't really have anyone else. Maybe Taylor or Vyman if you played him up there. But if you play Vyman up top on his own, it's pointless because he's not big enough, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I agree. Naki Wells is a class signing. Uh, over the moon that we got him. Uh, Ideally, we could have got him a couple of days earlier, so I wasn't as stressed out towards the end of the window. That would have been quite nice. Uh, and yeah, the fact that we still have a phobie hanging around as well is really good. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens like, with his contract and the whole end of the season with all this corona rubbish as to whether we'll actually see him play many more times or not. Uh, but yeah, it's quite weird to think that we've got four potential, if you're included, Vyman, um, good strikers at the club now, which is bizarre. Um, I do think Jeju should start for his physical nature, but uh, I also think he works very well coming off the bench as he always seems to be incredibly fired up then. There was one game where he scored, I can't remember again, the opponent, but yeah. he scored and got sent off within like 10 minutes after coming on the bench. And yeah. I'm not going to lie, he was one of the most exciting strikers I've ever seen for those 10 minutes. That was a Jordan was, game, wasn't it? Yeah, that, that was a he was, game. he was sprinting around, which he doesn't usually do. He looks quite languid. Uh, admittedly, he then just started kicking the guy on the floor for no real reason, like, completely <laughs> lost his mind. But if we could see that more often, I would be, and obviously not the Reds, but the just the general caring, I'd be over the moon. Yeah, yeah. He's well, got, got quite, got a, quite, quite a lazy style, hasn't um, he? Um, Naki Wells, we've not seen enough of him. He's not even been starting, so you could even say that we've sold Frown Hill for a person who's not even starting. Yeah, but he's only... Didn't start a couple, wasn't it? He has been starting. I mean, like, yeah, but he's not starting every week, like Browner was. Yeah, I think yeah, there's but... been a big. If you look at the, the squad now versus where it was even 18 months ago, most of that squad has been changed. So, uh, one of the issues with Bristol City in general, I think, is the turnover of the squad. We sell our best players, we get players in, and, and to be fair, we've done really well. Some of the players we've bought in have been excellent, but. The issue is you can't keep selling these players and expect everyone to gel straight away. You know, it takes time for players to get used to each other, especially strikers with attackers. That whole Palmer and Afobi thing was incredible because it was like they were telepathic, like they knew which, which way people were going to run. Naki Wells might not necessarily have that with Eliasson or whatever. So it's a case of playing together, getting used to what the other guy's going to do, and then eventually they'll know and it'll just click, hopefully. So 
Uh, I do think, like I said, I think we're in a much better position from a strike force perspective. We've got loads of different options. Um, and it's just a case of picking the right ones. And Joe's going to tell us who's been on fire for us up front this season. Yeah, well, you make a good point about Wells. I mean, he's been um, eight games he's played for us, believe it or not. Um, but three of them he was subbed on and two of them he was subbed off. So he's actually played three lots of 90 minutes. He's only got the goals. Phoebe's record um, is fantastic. Three goals in five games. He's got the highest points per game, 2.2. So basically when he plays, he scores and we win or draw. You know, that's promotion form, two points a game. But well above that. Yeah. Up scorers. I mean, it's only a small little sample of that though, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. But um, like you said, yeah, he was on fire when he came in and you're just thinking, God, if we get for the season, we're laughing. Then he gets injured. Byman's got nine goals, second top scorer. Um, Brownhill with five. Uh, obviously, he's gone. Uh, Dave's got 12 in 35 games. Um, I think we all know, yeah, he's just, um, if he could finish a chance, he'd be top class. Um, but he can't and he's not. And um, I, I'm not a fan. I won't slag him off. I won't slag him off. Um, the thing is with Dave, I mean, yeah, he's he's not the best striker in the league, but I do think he gets some unfair criticism at times. Yeah. Um, some okay, he's had a couple of bad games, and then into the third game, he'll miss a chance, and people are completely on his back. And I can understand why that happens. Um, I think Matty Taylor, when he missed the chance, and he. His goal scoring record wasn't particularly very good either for us. Um, he, he didn't seem to ever be getting the same sort of criticism. Um, he only just, lost two hundred k though, whereas uh, JG was uh, of, I know, you, I know you, you you do mention the the money thing, but it's regardless. That's irrelevant, really. It's. I think uh, Taylor runs around so much, doesn't he? You see him buzzing around. He's an absolute pain I in think, the ass. To I think that's him. where it comes from. Yeah, you you can see the effort's been put in with him, and because I think. Hey, you had a good word for for Dave. He's like languid, and he's like he's looking mm. a bit laboured at times, and that's just probably his mannerisms or or the way he moves yeah. around the pitch. Whereas, it like, comes uh, across as though he doesn't care. I think that's the biggest issue. Yeah. He obviously yeah. does, but it looks like yeah. he'd rather be. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I don't think it's a case of not caring. When he scores, you can see the passion that comes out of him. So I genuinely yeah. don't think it's the fact he doesn't care. I think it's the fact that he looks like he switches off quite a lot. He's not mm. always on on the, like on his toes, and it looks like sometimes he's just you know waiting for the, the game to go by a little bit. And you know, as, as a fan, you know we'd all love to be out on the pitch, but we know we're nowhere near as good as these guys anyway. So you know, it's all it's all well and good for us to sit here and criticise these guys, and we're only really doing it as fans of the club because we want to see the, the club succeed. But with with Deju, you can see the, the the physicality of the guy. He's a massive guy. Um, when he chucked himself around, he really is handful for defenders, and you know. He misses so many chances that are one-on-one, um, headers in the box, whereas if it was at the other end, they'd be yeah. absolutely gone, guaranteed. So, you know, I, I think the fans just get a little bit confused um, as to why that's happening. And, you know, what, what are we doing off the pitch with this guy to improve his finishing? And I, I think he does care. So, you know, yeah, it comes back to um, how do we help this guy improve? And actually, maybe being around someone like Mackie Wells, who arguably is probably one of the best finishers in the division, uh, might actually rub off on him a little bit, which would be good. So, if we're playing two up front, are we all pretty much in agreement we'd have to play Dave and Wells so a phobia doesn't get in? I, no, yeah. I'd, I'd love to see Wells and a phobia together, but I don't, I'm not sure if it would work, but you can dream. I think for practical purposes, JJ would have to start and then you could bring uh, a phobia on. Could you not play a phobia with Wells? Is that just, I know you said it's too similar, but he is. He is okay in the air, isn't he, a phobie? I seem mm. to remember. I'd, I'd personally try it, but uh, I think, like, especially with a phobie just coming back now, if you were to just chuck him in with Wells, yeah, well, like, yeah, no, yeah, I'd be able to move, yeah. but I think it could be a I bit of a gamble. With, I think with a phobie, you got to play Palmer, sort of. Like, well, yeah, they link, they've got a great yeah. partnership, haven't they? So. Yeah. But the whole team's changed. Since a phobie, like you said, it's yeah. a very small sample. You know, I think we all love the phobie, it was great, but he played five games. Um, and actually, the team lineups changed quite a lot since he's gone injured and come back. You know, like Brian Hill. Yes, he had that good connection with Casey Palmer, but Brian Hill would have played a big part of that as well. You know, whether it's giving the ball to Palmer in the first place, or actually um, being a foil or sort of taking some people away from a phobia as well. So, the striker point there. Um, 
I think I'd love to see a phobia in Wells, um, but yeah, it probably may, may, might not work and with a phobia's injury. But if you started Dave and Wells, um, whichever one of them's not performing, if we need a goal, you just bring on a phobia, but you bring on Palmer as well and let them try and link up. Um, almost like a, they come in, come as a pair, basically, and just bring them both on at the same time and see what can you can do from that. So we've gone through uh, our team all the way from the front to the back. And uh, yeah, I think we're feeling pretty confident about the rest of the season and the future. Uh, a few areas to improve on, uh, but overall, you know, it could be way, way worse. So uh, this is us signing off. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, wherever that might be, down there somewhere. Um, if we hit 100 subscribers, then young Ollie, again, to me, he's down there. I don't know where it would be on your screen. He's there for me. Uh, for, he could be there. Um, yeah, if we hit 100 subscribers, we're going to find a body of water to throw him in. Uh, the docks is an option, but obviously we need to make sure that that is legal. Uh, if not, we're going to go to Chew Valley or Port's Head or Western, something like that, and he's going in the water. So uh, the more subscribers, the better. Um, stay tuned for about transfers. Nice.